Here comes a smart-looking, self-aware guy on his cell. Send in the clown. He's getting closer. Closer. And... Oh! The clown goes right by without drawing so much as a look. Is this for real? A clown riding a unicycle. Right past you on the sidewalk in broad daylight. Totally out of place. How could you miss that? Well, according to our next guest, there's a totally logical explanation why one person on the phone uh, would entirely miss the most distracting and bizarre events. And it's just one of the mind games that all of our brains play on us every day. We're breaking it down with neurobiologist Mark Changizi. He's one of the experts featured on Discovery's three-part series called Head Games. The final part airs this Sunday, June 17th at 10 p.m. on the Discovery Channel. And we were just chatting even before the, the, uh, the commercial, and you're really making the point. We don't really know all the variables that dictate we have sort of linear analysis but we don't know how the whole environment is working together in in, in symphony if you will uh, but you at the very least seem to have some sense of why it is we don't look at the guy in the clown well, yeah so it's true we, we really don't know what we're talking about in terms of understanding the brain and its connection to the full sets of behaviors but in, in, it, one of the interesting things about this experiment is People may know about these experiments where you look at something in your visual field. You say, look, count the number of balls, and meanwhile, a gorilla walks by, and you miss it completely. This is even more counterintuitive because here all that's going on is that you have a cell phone. So these are cell phone, guys on their cell phone, gals on their cell phone walking through a campus. And, and you're saying an, 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 a, an auditory stimulation is theoretically less distracting than a visual It ought one. to be because... Because I'm staring at a screen of red balls, I don't see the gorilla, that's one thing. Another thing, my eyes are not even being used. They're not being used. In fact, so this, this unicycling clown is, in fact, your visual system has the information. It's flowing right up your visual system. But for some reason, you don't see it even in the least. And it's because... That event is unrelated to the event that you're hearing. It has no connection. If it did, you might consider it part of the same event and pay attention. So what does that teach us then about context when we relate to everything? In other words, if, we're, if, something's, if we don't see things that are out of context and we continue to solve problems in our lives or in our government completely out of context, yeah. what does that tell us about the way we're using our brains? Well... One way to respond is that, I mean, these are, these, the way that these experiments are done are such that we can focus on the clown and we realize okay. this. But it's even happening right now. Right now there's cameras moving right. to my left. Sure. And I'm not paying attention to them. If we stand to the side of a tennis court, for example, and watch 12 games simultaneously, we can choose to focus on the fourth one down. Um, and we don't really think about it as we're focusing. But the other stuff is all in front of our visual field. So these things are happening every all moment right. of our lives. Yeah. Uh, and potentially in political context. And potentially in political context as well. See, now you're officially a Discovery Channel neurobiologist, scientist, and a cable political pundit for the 2012 election. Congratulations. <laughs> um, you, 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 I understand that they told me uh, that uh, you have a test that you want to conduct with me on the set. Is that correct? Well, hold on a second. You can't just start staring at me. We have to tell the audience that you want to run an experiment where you stare at me. I will stare at you, but I will not stare at you as the host of the show and not speak. It ruins it. I mean, no, no, but it doesn't ruin it. If you, the way this works on TV is we have to explain the experiment. No, I see, no but, but it's more creepy if I just start staring I understand. No there's, so there's theater in it because then you're like a weird guest. Right, yeah. That's, that's so we try to, so we, now so, let's try so what, We're going to test this. We're going to stare at each other. And then after we'll figure out what just happened. So I, wanted, yeah, I just want the audience to know what we're going to do so they don't think you're strange. Yeah, it's too late. Uh, the, but it's, it completely misses the point of you, for you. You're not going to be creeped out of me. But we can do it. Let's start then. Now, it's well known. What are you doing with your lips there? It's a very strange thing to do. Um, now, if you do this for a long period of time, of course, men and women will uh, you know, have feelings that they like each other more, more so than they'll they have you. sex. Who are we kidding, doctor? <laughs> they stare at each other. Food, sex, the path of... So anyway, yeah. staring means what? Uh, so in the experiment that we did here, we had people show up to a, a, getting an oil change, and they sit down in the waiting room, and they're waiting, and they're having a good conversation. And everybody else in the waiting room, unbeknownst to them, are actors, and we've got our hidden cameras all around. And at some point, the owner walks in and says, here's a special card for you. After this point, a special uh, gift card. So it changes the... Suddenly, everybody begins to stare. At first... The actor's instructions are to do it covertly. So never let them know that you're staring. Look away immediately. But soon it's ramped up so they're just full-on staring. 
And watching their reactions is, is fascinating because they're sweating and people, you know, they're, they're blushing. And often you blush more even on the side of the face that people are looking at you. It's actually wow. Going. Here, people were looking on all sides. They had nowhere to run. And what's interesting about looking at somebody, why do people react like this? If you listen to somebody or smell somebody, you're not really directing anything toward them. But, but if you touch someone, it's, it's, it's quite different. When you touch somebody, it's more getting into their space. And not only that, when you touch somebody, they know that you're touching you, right? I, looking at someone is very similar. I'm, I'm examining you, and when I touch you with my eyes, you know it. That is, we're really sensitive. I feel sensitive. you observing you me. Feel it. And Whereas I don't necessarily feel you listening to me. The, as, the, yeah. as the observant, or as if you're observing whoever right. the person and, is. That's right, and, and smell doesn't work that way, too, unless you're a dog. Because I don't hear you smelling, I don't yeah. feel you smelling me. That's right, unless, again, you know. Again, you're dog, but we're not dogs. Oh. <laughs> but so, but the, the point is... And you're in, but your eyes have evolved to be easy to see, right? The, the, we've got these white eyes, so they're really easy to tell which... So when all these people are suddenly looking at this poor Mark, this subject, um, they're, they're, they're not even looking away. They're saying, I know that you know we're looking at you. And we don't care, right? So it's a very and that's almost conf- that's either a confrontation, it's be some kind it of is, meaning, it's yeah. overture, it's something. That's right. These they were instructed not to put any anger face or anything. Right. So it's just a, a very. Did they do anybody do weird things with their lips like I did, or was that unique to me? No, because I wasn't in the room. It was really that just okay. me. Oh, okay. Because that might be a unique thing that I just invented. <laughs> put it on the show. We'll be co on, the, yeah, on that yeah, paper. Yeah, I'll yeah. do that with you. We'll submit yeah. it. Um, a pleasure to know you. Um, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Chang Easy. Check him out. Uh, not only a, a, a brain expert, but um, you can catch him on TV playing these very head games Sunday night, June 17th at 10 p.m. on the Discovery Channel. Thank you for coming over to play with us and teach us a little bit. Thanks a lot. All right.